Okay, so welcome. Let's let's start. So my name is Michelle Shinagawa. I'm originally from Japan. And like I said, I took the Queen's Code workshop 17 years ago and it just changed my life so drastically. And it helped me in every area and like any time. So it helped me in my um, career, also in my personal life, and of course in my romantic life too. So when um, I've been in the 12 year relationship with my college sweetheart, who still is my best friend. So we decided that, okay, you know what? Our direction is not going together. Right? Unfortunately, we're not fairy tale, so not always you get to stay with the same person, but we're best friend. And he is still the biggest contributor in my life. So he's the one that's proofreading my stuff, hanging stuff for me. Whenever I need anything, he's there for me. Uh, my former fiance, unfortunately, he had to move to Boston and um, I had to think really hard about leaving New York City and I couldn't. So we're still a good friend. I'm still in touch with him and I still have a really nice warm fuzzy feeling for him. Mm -hmm. And I hope he does too because he said, oh, I still speak highly of you. Mm -hmm. So I get to have this amazing relationship with often the most difficult people, right? Exes, mm -hmm. um, as well as strangers. They are um, often, I travel a lot. So it used to be, it was very stressful for me to have to put my suitcase into overhead compartment. Anyone feel that way, right? It's so heavy and you know, I don't have big arms. And now I, oh, I never have to worry because I sometimes have men fighting over who's gonna take my suitcase down. <laughs> yeah, and I, it was interesting the other day, I think last month, we're just like walking down, like we haven't even got to the plane yet, right? That, that tunnel part. And the guy I was talking to, I didn't even mention anything. And he looked at my suitcase and he said, oh, that looks heavy. And it's just a suitcase, right? I don't know how he can tell it's heavy, but oh, that looks heavy. You want me to put it up on the overhead compartment for you? I'm like, sure. <laughs> So when you can understand men, it's not just the English too, of course the language helps too, but also the attitude. When you have the certain kind of attitude that's coming from the partnership, then they can pick that up. Men are actually very sensitive to the energy and they can tell if we're guarded or if you're in a fighting mood or if you're being receptive. So because this information helped me so much when I was single or when I was dating or when I'm in a long term relationship at the, any of the, the jobs that I do, um, I decided that I want to share this with as many women as possible because I was very shy. I never wanted to be up here like this. I used to like choke speaking in front of like five of my friends. But I felt like this information should be out there with all of you because I've seen so many women suffering and also men too. So that's why I decided to teach this information. So that's a little bit about me. And I'm sure you'll hear a little bit more about me throughout. We're often very confused about what has men think attractive about us. Why we're shooting in the dark, we do so many different things and hoping that he would like it. Well, I'll tell you the eight most attractive quality in women that has been proven. And then also the six ways that men respond to attraction. It's a clear and predictable way they respond. But we often get confused on the attraction with men, right? It's like, oh, what is he doing? There's a mixed signal. After you learn this, there won't be any mixed signal. Is that a good news? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the effect of attraction, the thing is there are two kinds of attraction and we, most of us don't know that. So what we often do is we work really hard to try to get attention and hoping that would turn into affection. Has any of you done that? Yeah. So even like Disney movie, right? And then, I mean, if you read Cosmo and all that stuff, right? It's like, okay, how do you get men's attention? 
right? Okay, the big boobs and all those things. And then we work really hard on that. So what you need to know is that there is the, and you have a handout over there you can pull out. It says effect of attraction. So the one side is sexual attraction. Okay, what's the one side? Sexual attraction. Yes, let's say one more time together. Sexual attraction, yes. And what do you get on that side? Attention. Okay, what do you get on that side? Attention. Attention. Yes, and then the other side, what we call charmed and enchanted. That side, you get affection. What do you get on that side? Affection. Yes, so these two are caused by two completely, completely different things, but we don't know that. And that's what causes our confusion. So if you only have these four things, shiny hair, shapely body, sexual energy, and sensuality. If you only have these four things, then all you get is him wanting to have sex with you. I know, and most women are working really hard, going to the gym, right, getting into shapely body, and going to pole dancing, and you know, so many things, wanting to have a long-term committed relationship, and just maybe getting laid and wondering what's wrong with me? How come I am not a wife material or girlfriend material? That's because we only wor worked and focused on the sexual attraction side. So there's nothing wrong with you, right? We are just turning the wrong side. So especially this happens when we're younger because we don't know and we get insecure and then we work really hard on this side. And all he wants is to have sex. Who's ready to learn the other side? Okay, the side that get men involved in with his heart, emotionally involved with you. So that's what we call charmed and enchanted. Because often men use that kind of word. Um, she's charming or I'm enchanted by her. And if you are with younger men who doesn't have as much vocabulary, then he, <laughs> then he may say, oh, she's special. So any of those, you can think, oh, he's charmed and enchanted by me. The things that we often mistake in when men are charmed and enchanted by you. There is this menglis that they use. So the other side, it was a physically attracted. And then this side, men often say, I care about you, right? Maybe you've been going out for three months and you're asking him, so where is it going? How do I feel about us? How do you feel about me? And then he say, I care about you, right? It's like, he says it as if like it's a big deal. And we're like, what the hell? I care about you? Where's the L word? And often we use the care word when we're trying to dump someone, right? Oh, I care about you, but I don't think we're going the same direction. Oh, I care about you, but, right? So here we are thinking, shit, he used the care instead of the L word. Mm -hmm. So he's gonna dump me soon. Okay, so you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna dump him before he dumps me. Mm -hmm. Anyone's been there? So what he's actually saying when he said, I care about you, he actually is saying he's emotionally invested in you. So most of the time when he used the care word, then the love is coming. And for some men, I care about you is more important than I love you. Because for some men, what he's saying when he said, I care about you, is I'm emotionally invested in you and our future together and our unborn child. <coughs> so next time, when a man say, I care about you, don't drop him, okay? <laughs> I, I personally experienced it, and thank God I knew this information, right? This man I was dating, and he said, and I didn't even ask him, where, you know, where are we, what do you think? But he said, 
I care about you. Like, it was a big deal. I'm like, huh, it sounds like something I learned in, you know, <laughs> in the workshop, okay. And the next week was when he actually professed love to me. And I said, I love you. And it was such a beautiful moment. And I was so thankful that I didn't go into that cave woman attack <laughs> and dump him thinking, oh my God, he care about me, really? <laughs> So can you take that on next time? Yes. Man in your life said, I care about you. <coughs> know that he is emotionally invested in you. What is it? Emotionally yes. invested in you. Okay, great. All right. So the next, you know, before I move on to the causes, I would like to tell you some pitfalls of being charming and enchanting. Is that okay with you? Yes. So now that after this event, you're gonna be very charming and enchanting, right? You're gonna be walking out as a light being and, <laughs> and then you're gonna be very charming and enchanting to many men. And this thing may happen. So I wanna warn you ahead of the time. So when men are charmed and enchanted by you, they do this thing, what we call photoshopping. And I'll explain to you what it is, but what, what did I just call that? Photoshopping, yes. So what they do is they take your little pretty face and cut it out and put it in in part of his life where he wants to spend with his woman and see how it fits there. And often he does this out loud. So if he's a concert guy, then he may say, Oh, Coldplay is coming to Madison Square Garden in August. They're amazing live. And what you need to know as woman, which I didn't know until I learned from Allison, is that our feeling can only grow where there is a future. When there is a future, then there is room to grow. So if you're out on a date, and you know, you're having a great time, he's a great guy, he hasn't done anything horrible, but if he hasn't made any comment about anything about future, like the next restaurant he wanna take you out, then you can only like him this much. Like your feeling is somewhere stop here. But then if he says, oh, you're from Japan, I know this great Japanese restaurant in Upper East Side, we should try that next time. Then your feeling grow. Yeah, can you get that? Mm -hmm. So when men are photoshopping and talking about Coldplay at Madison Square Garden in August, then we're like, oh, okay. So he thinks we're together in August. <laughs> and he may say things like, oh, you know, fall in Vermont. Have you ever been there? The foliage is so beautiful. My family has a house there. And we're like, fall, Vermont? Okay, he thinks we're gonna be together in the fall and we have all these great pictures. And then the big doozies are, if you're someone who is planning on having children, right? he may say things like, oh, you're gonna be great mother, or my mother will love you. Around that time, a wedding bell is in our hand going, doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> And you know, the wedding bell goes off anytime, anyway, right? We like look at a really nice looking guy on the street and our eye cross, and then our story started already, right? He's gonna come talk to me, ask me for phone number. We all do this, right? <laughs> so the most men don't know this, that our feeling grow with the future. So they are just innocently photoshopping us in his life and saying it out loud, what would his life be like if you're in Vermont? But most of the time, all he's saying is, have you ever been to Vermont in a fall? The foliage is amazing. And he hasn't invited you. He didn't say, oh, let's go on September 3rd or Labor Day, right? But we made up that okay, I'm gonna be there and I'm gonna meet his family. And all our fantasy story goes, yes, we've all done this. Yes. And then we come down to our reality. It's like, oh my God, okay, he wants to be with me. Oh, and then, you know what? If we're with a guy who we don't wanna be with, it's like, oh my God, okay, how can I stop this train, right? <laughs> so then we try to just like leave right away. But if this is someone you wanna be with, 
Then we're like all out there thinking about, hmm, okay, what should I do with my last name? His last name and my last name? Can I hyphenate that? <laughs> right? Who's going to be my bridesmaid? All this fantasy land. And then when we come down to the reality, I'll be like, so you're going to take your profile off from Match.com, right? <laughs> um, so you're changing your status on Facebook, right? And all these things, we try to nail down the reality. And then he starts to back off. He's like, what's going on here? Right? He has no idea what he's doing. So he's like, what's going on here? You know, all, all these women, I go on first date, and all they want is commitment right away. He doesn't know that he dropped a bomb on us mm -hmm. by giving us all these future because he's charmed and enchanted by us. Mm -hmm. So what he's doing, right? Next time you're out on a date and he's charmed and enchanted by you and start talking about all these future, if there's no date associated with it, then he's talking about possibilities. Mm -hmm. And we're listening to plans and promises. Okay, what's he listening to? Possibilities. Sorry, what, what's he talking? Possibilities. possibilities. And we're listening to plans and promises. Yes. So that's where the out of syncness happens between men and women. Because we're thinking, okay, we're getting married. And he's thinking, okay, let's see how she fits in my life. And then we're devastated. Why right? a few months goes by, nothing happened, you haven't gone to any concert or Vermont, or you haven't met his mom. It's like, what happened? And then, you know, it could be happening in a long-term relationship too. So he may say, you know, he's so charmed and enchanted by you. He may say, oh, you know, winter in Hawaii would be great. Or, oh, that kitchen needs remodeling and nothing happens half a year later. <laughs> and you're thinking, oh my God, I got the lazy one. <laughs> no, it's because he was speaking the possibilities. So knowing that, right, now you can actually go to another level and have communication with him. If that's a future you want, then you need to actually talk to him, have a conversation and nail that down instead of living in our Lululand and expecting things to happen. So this is one of the way we're out of sync. And um, it's discussed more in depth in this CD called In Sync with Opposite Sex. This was a workshop for a couple that um, Alison, my teacher, used to do. And uh, because there's so many ways we're out of sync. And we created this workshop for a woman who's dating because we're so out of sync when we're dating, right? I mean, just one example, you can see that. And we're all nodding, right? Like, oh, yeah, I've done that. And there's eight more ways that we're out of sync. So it's all in here. It's four and a half hours of um, great entertainment, just like what, what I just said. And that, what I said is just a cliff note. So you get more detail in there um, of how we're out of sync and how to fix that. So um, I'll tell you later how you may be able to go home with that and start your education on getting in sync with opposite sex when you walk out of here. Mm -hmm. But what I want you to get is maybe right after this, you go out to a bar or a restaurant with your girlfriends and you're having fun and you're being very charming and enchanting and some guy will come to you and start talking to you and maybe start dropping some possibilities. Mm -hmm. You know what to do. Yes, you know that he's talking about possibilities. Don't make it plans and promises. Yes? So I just want you to have that to make sure that you won't get all carried away and be hurt by that. Um, could I tell you a little bit about Queen's Code Workshop before I go back to the causes? And yes. then, okay. So in the Queen's Code Workshop, we do seven steps. To, for you to be able to be in sync with men. So that's what we do in the Queen's Code Workshop. It's a two-day workshop from 10 to 7, and we spend 27 years researching men. And we've been running this workshop since, I believe, 1995. And we've been updating it every time. So 
um, now we have healing. We start out with healing. So you see that step one, heal our heartbreaks. Because when we have so much wound, then the men that's in front of you often are paying for the guy from the past that's no longer in your life. Mm -hmm. So we start with the healing so that you can be free from all the past hurt and you be able to actually learn about men. Mm -hmm. And we used to not have that part and it was like a struggle to be able to you know, teach women. It's like, oh, why do I need to? Why am I the only one? But once we can actually release all that, then it's great for you and it's great for men in your life as well too. Mm -hmm. And then once you release that, then you'll be able to be open to a new possibility. And one of the things that um, I don't have it in here is a panel of men. So it's generally the favorite part for the woman. Um, on Saturday and Sunday, I teach you how men are, right? So this is me, let's say, um, teaching, how do I describe this? So me coming from women's interpretation, right? So if men come and talk to you about how they are, you'll probably be like, yeah, whatever, mm -hmm. right? But because I'm coming from women's perspective, you'll be able to hear it better. But then towards the end, you know, you may be thinking, okay, but could it be that good? Is that really true? So what happens is on Sunday, we have panel men that comes in, normally three to four, sometimes five, and you get to hear from horse's mouth. And you get to hear how amazing they are. And what you learned from me is validated by them. And I don't coach them, they just, tell us what's in for them, what they feel, and they correlate. Because what I'm doing is pretty much, you know, like let's say I'm teaching you Japanese and what Japanese people do, right? And then if I bring Japanese people, what they're gonna say would match what I'm saying. So um, an amazing thing happens when you actually get to see men in a new light. So you're seeing from a new perspective and you're listening to men in a new light. And have you ever had the experience that maybe your, your mate, your romantic partner has told you so many times that things should be this way? Like in my case, my, um, my college sweetheart was like really tidy one. And he said, all you have to do is find place for each item <laughs> and put it there. Right? And I never listened to him. And then I go to a workshop about decluttering. And then that's what I heard. And I, you know, I come home and I'm still best friend with him. So I tell him that. And he's like, it's not what I told you the whole time. I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> so that kind of thing happened when you're hearing from your man, it's really hard for us to hear because we're involved in them. But when you get to hear from someone else, then you actually get to see them. And once you see them, then you'll be able to hear men in your life and see them in a different light. And it's just so awesome every time when men are answering questions, I go to the back of the room. I give the space to men so that they can express whatever they want to express. And after an hour or so, I come back to the front of the room and the participant's face changes. It almost looked like they went out and got a facial or facelift or something. It gets so much softer. And that's the kind of attitude change that gives you a partnership. You know, it's great to be edgy and get shit done. But when you're, if you want to be in a partnership with a man, then you need to shift from one place to another. And you get to learn to do that. What if you learn about men and you succeed at your work or your business? Mm -hmm. I got 30% raise on the first week at a new job because I knew how to communicate with men. So that was a small price to pay for me to get that, right? And my business too. So if you wanna think about how, what has it been costing you? not understanding men and what's possible for you if you can actually understand men. So 
the workshop will be in New York City. So even if you're not coming, if you can just write down New York City, and the date is September 29th and 30th. And it will be Lower East Side downtown location. And it will be convenient from Subway. OK, so now let's go back to the original part of the causes of charming and enchanting. So causes of charming and enchanting. Let's talk about what inspires men to give you what you need and spend time with you and contribute to you. So the first one is self-confidence. What's the first one? Self-confidence. Yes. Self-confidence is the most attractive quality in women. Some men say self-confidence in mentality and in their body. Right? And often we don't get so confident being around guys we are high on chemistry with. Have you noticed that, right? That, that doctor guy that I was with, mm -hmm. I was like, okay, you know, he used to call me, like my nickname was beautiful. Hi, beautiful, how are you doing beautiful? And I always felt like I was cheating him. It's like, when is he gonna find out I'm not really beautiful? Because, you know, I just put all these things up. What if he, he sees me without makeup? Mm -hmm. So I wasn't confident. And most men can see through that. And it's very disappointing for them to see you not be confident. And the biggest disappointment that they have with you not being confident is when they compliment you. When they compliment you, and then if we go, oh, really? Yeah, but you know, this thing, it's a little bit old, and oh, it shows off my tummy. And, he actually took time and he thought you look beautiful and he complimented you. And by you going like this, right? He can tell you're not confident and he's less charmed and enchanted by you. Mm -hmm. So when I talk about confident, right? Some people get a little bit mixed up. It's not those women who like themselves a little too much. <laughs> Right? They actually don't have enough confidence. That's why they have to like talk about themselves too much. But often these are older women. Think of the woman in your life who's very comfortable in their skin. Right? And then when you're around them, you can be yourself. You can be happy. You don't have to compete. You don't have to do anything. That's what men are feeling when you're being confident. They don't have to babysit you. They get to be themselves too around you and they get to compliment you and see you happy. Mm. And they get to be happy that you're happy. Does that make sense? Yes. So self-confident is the most important thing. And it's not always easy to be self-confident, right? We wake up and we have bad hair day or you know we're bloated and we're not confident. So I can help you with that on the second one. So the second one is the authenticity. What's the second one? Authenticity. Yeah. So men can tell when we're being authentic or when we're pretending. So the way that maybe you be able to fix the lack of self-confidence because can you see that self-confidence and authenticity can go together? Mm -hmm. So if you're not being self-confident because you showed up on a date and you were in meetings all day long and you didn't even have lunch, and most of us, when we're not self-confident, is we sit down at the bar or at the restaurant and we think, okay, I don't want to be high maintenance. Let me just order a salad. <laughs> right? We're starving, but it's just like, okay, yeah, I'll have one of those. You know, I don't really eat that much. And in our head, thinking, oh my God, when can I go home so I can eat my steak? <laughs> <laughs> and they can tell that. Right? They're wondering, like, how come she's not here? She's not authentic. She's not self-confident. So what you can do is you can be authentic 
about your lack of self-confidence and say, you know, I'm a little embarrassed, but I had meeting all day long and I didn't get to eat my lunch today. Is it okay if I order two appetizers and an entree? <laughs> and then if you're like, mm, oh my God, oh, mm, nah. Right? Can you see who, what man wouldn't want that? So same thing, right? I, I'm a foodie, so I have a lot of food examples. But can you see in your life you can just change it and be authentic about your lack of self-confidence? And just be, just pick yourself up. Just be authentic. That's what they're looking for. They actually want to meet you, right? Just like what I said about makeup. Most men want to see you without makeup because you are beautiful the way you are instead of putting all these things on there. So give them opportunity to meet who you are and be who you are. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Next one, number three, is passion. What's number three? Passion. Okay, and maybe I want to hear it with a little more, more question. <laughs> passion. passion! Okay, so can we say it together with some sort of hand gesture, with some sort of, some excitement with passion, please? Three, two, one. Passion! passion. Thank you. Yes, so passion is the number three most attractive quality in women. So for them, when they get to hear you talk about something they're passionate about, or what do you do something that you're passionate about, that gives them the sense of well-being, the overwhelming sense of, um, of well-being. And the part of the brain they process women, women's voice, is where they process the music. So it's like listening to an orchestra. And you probably notice now when you're talking to a man, the difference when you're complaining about something as opposed to when you're talking about something you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. They're really in tune with that energy and how we are. So I can tell too when I'm sitting down and talking to my body and talking about something I'm passionate about, right? All of a sudden, the conversation went from, oh my God, okay, this is what I have to do to my business or this, this and that, that, that to like, oh, and I did this last weekend? And oh my God, and not only I picked up, but I can see he picked up. It doesn't have to be someone you're intimately, you know, related. It could be just, someone that you know, right? A buddy, and they tune in just like that. They love to see you be passionate about. And it could be anything. It doesn't have to be baseball or football or something that he's interested in, because often what I'm interested in is like, like spray painting my furniture or a dog or, you know, Japanese comic book or like <laughs> things that, yeah, most men are not that into. But as soon as I talk about it with my passion, they're like, oh, how can I contribute to her? Mm. Oh, you know, you can now get things on the iPad and read your Japanese comic book. Or, oh, you know, there is this furniture that I found that you, that you can probably spray paint, mm. right? And then, of course, I'm so into food. I'm always talking about food. Mm -hmm. That's why I have so many men who's contributing me food because I talk so passionately about the food they cook for me. Mm. So, make sense? Yes. Okay. So now the last one, and last one is very important. Although this is a fourth one, if you have one, two, three, but don't have the fourth one, that's a torture for men. So um, the fourth one is receptivity. What is that one? Receptivity. And there's two ways for this. So the first one, is being receptive to the gift that they can offer you. And have you noticed when I was giving you the example of what men do when they're charmed and enchanted by you? We're often like, no, 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 I got it. No, no, right? We're often not being receptive. And that's a torture for them because, because you're being 
um, self-confident and authentic and you're passionate. So that now like they want to spend time with you, take care of you, contribute to you, all these things. And then we're like, no, I got it. I can do that myself. Who says that? Yeah, all of us, right? And then they have to go away because they can't contribute to you. And unfortunately, that's in our culture, right? It's not your fault. That's what we are trained, even in Japan, right? I was trained to be independent and being able to do things myself. And when men offer us things, often we're offended because we think that, oh, they're, off well, they're offering it for us because they don't think I can do it myself. Mm. No, it's generally not the point. They're not offering it because we can't do it ourselves. No, they're doing it because they want to contribute to us. They're compelled to contribute to us. So when we can be receptive, then they get to have a relationship with us, right? Romantic or anything. But when we're like, no, 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 then that's it. They don't get to do anything. And I, um, there's one interview that I did, very young man, man, but he even said, I don't wanna be around anyone that I can't contribute. Mm -hmm. Men are compelled to contribute. And if we keep saying, no, 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 Maybe that's why you don't have men in your life who's doing all these things for you, right? Maybe that's why you don't have men in your life who's spending time with you, contributing to you, taking care of you, because you keep saying no, and then they gave up and they walked out. You don't have to accept every gift they offer you, right? Some things, I mean, if it's shoes like that, I wouldn't mind accepting it, but sometimes they come with, <laughs> they come with something that you really don't want. But, yeah, awesome. yeah, so there's that too, right? But then you can be receptive to the effort that they made. Instead of, no, 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 are you stupid? I don't want that. Or like, are you crazy? I can't, I can't receive that expensive yeah, gift. Yeah, so you can mention that like, oh my God, thank you for thinking of me. You knew this was my favorite brand. And you know, I don't feel comfortable receiving it yet, right? And then maybe there's certain condition that you're willing to receive. Because often, and I go more into this in Queen's Code Workshop, but you know, often that we think that men are doing things and looking for something in return. Mm. Not always, okay? Because, and I can't, I can't go into this here, but we're like the unicorn in the forest. If you found the unicorn in the forest, and if they just need something, wouldn't you go out and take care of them? Mm -hmm. So that's why, when we can actually communicate with men. Because some men may be looking for something, right? So if you can find out what it is they're looking for, and they said, oh, well, I just want you to be happy. It's like, okay, I'll take those shoes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have to move on from that one, but let's talk about the other side of receptivity. The other side of receptivity is being receptive to who they are as a man. Unfortunately, in our culture, we think men are up for no good. Men are misbehaving, right? Watch any sitcom and all the men are dragged down and, you know, they're not. They're always often up for something good. It's just different from how we do things. So maybe they're late on our anniversary because they really wanted to get you this special flower for you. But then by the time he showed up, you're so pissed that he can't even show you the flower. Mm. So you want to be receptive to who men are. There's nothing like looking into a woman's eye for men, knowing that he's accepted for who he is. Because most of the time, they're not. We're looking to see when is he going to misbehave. Yes? Because we think men are misbehaving hairy women. <laughs> and we just keep doing everything ourselves instead of actually letting them take care of you. So if they don't have a room for small gift, if you don't have a room to receive small gift, then they're not gonna try harder. 
you need to start out small. And then if you're happy, then they'll go bigger. But sometimes they're shooting in the dark and they get you something wrong. And I go more into this in a Queen's Code workshop. But if you can be happy, if you can be receptive, if you can be gracious of this little thing that you don't really want, but you can at least thank him for the effort, then he's going to try again. But if you keep shooting him down, then he's just going to go away and say, you deserve to be someone who can make you happy. And that's it. And you got no one left. Does that make sense? Yes. OK. So the thing is, in the Queen's Code workshop, we teach you how men are and what they do. Bless you. And how to be feminine for us, but powerful at the same time. Because we often are afraid that if we become more feminine, right? Masculinity in this culture is so praised that we think we need to be like a man. But most men know that we are better than them. They're like, are you crazy? Why do you want to be like men? <laughs> because they know we have the bigger vision. So what I offer you in the Queen's Code Workshop is actually partnering, partnering with men, not as inferior, but as a powerful feminine being with a powerful masculine being. Because what often happens when you're being masculine and when you're in a relationship, you often attract wounded men. And you think that's all men are. They are amazing, wonderful, powerful men. But most of them don't want to be with another hunter, right? So if you are someone, and this is a complaint I hear the most time, how do I find a powerful man who can compliment me? I don't want to go out with any more losers. Well, what you need to do is change your attitude. Change your attitude about men. Change your attitude about who you are. You don't need to be edgy or masculine all the time to be powerful. You can be feminine and powerful. And that's what we teach you, as well as how to communicate with men. So the thing is, what happens with, um, often I'll just talk about relationship, but also it could be happening at work what we call the toilet is one day you're a wonderful man, right? It could be your boss or it could be the men you're dating. They've been great. It's like, oh, I found one of the rare men. And then one day he does this thing that you would never do or any woman would never do. And then it hits you. It's like, oh, why did he do that? Why is he misbehaving? Oh. And you know our favorite question, woman's favorite question, is why? Mm -hmm. Why does he do that? And then we're like, oh, that's because he doesn't love me. Oh, he doesn't care about me. He doesn't respect me. And then we go, why? Why doesn't he care about me, respect me? And then we go into a less self-confident person because we think he doesn't like us anymore and we need to change something about it. So we're less authentic, right? We think, oh, okay, was I being too assertive? Oh, did I, is it because I gained 10 pounds? And then we start to contour ourselves. And then maybe he was calling you every day for three months, and then you don't hear from him all day because he's less charmed and enchanted by you. And then we are like, okay, what? Why is he not calling me anymore? So even more, right? Our self-confidence takes a hit and we try to change other things. And most of the time we're pissed that, oh, I can't believe he thinks I'm fat. I only gained 10 pounds and it's because of him because we've been eating ice cream together. <laughs> so we do all these things in our head, but most of the time he didn't tell you, we came up with it. Often it's not the truth. And then he's calling you less and less because we're like, okay, I gotta hide this until I can fix it. 
and then we're less authentic or less confident. And we can't be passionate when we're doing that. And how can you be receptive when we're pissed, right? So that's how you go down the toilet. How many of you have been in the toilet? Yeah. And how many of you tried to get a new toilet <laughs> and then got a, and then replace it and keep replacing it, right? So in the Queen's Code workshop, we do the opposite. We teach you how to ask for what you need for men in a language that communicate to him. And because you know how to inspire men to give you what you need, he'll bring it to you. And then we teach you how to receive it well and how to appreciate him in a way that registers for him. Then he go back and he comes back and he said, what else do you need? And your self-confidence goes up, right? Oh, he likes me. Oh, this is cool. And then you use the language you learn in the Queen's Code workshop and be more self-confident and authentic. And you can keep telling him all the ways that makes you happy. And he keep bringing it to you because he's so happy to be able to give you that. And you know what? Most women are so afraid of telling men what we need. And the number one thing that men want to know is what we need. <laughs> because they're shooting in the dark. We just don't know how to communicate. When we think we told him what we need, we didn't communicate in a way that resonates with him. So that's what we teach you in the Queen's Code workshop so that you guys can communicate together. So that's how we go into the upward spiral. So the, um, quickly, I'll just talk about the um, seven reasons why women can't get what we need from men. Um, because you may be thinking, okay, I'm self-confident and I'm most of the time authentic and I um, passionate and receptive most of the time, why I'm not getting all these things that I want to get. So the first one is attitude. We have the attitude of being skeptical and suspicious, right? We just talked about that. Mm -hmm. What does he want in return? Or, oh, I'm his girlfriend, he should be doing this. So entitlement, that kills his desire. So we teach you how to inspire men to get what you need from men. So there's no manipulation involved in it. It's about inspiring him. And then number two, testosterone versus estrogen in the brain. So men's brain are wired differently. It's not wired defectively in case if you thought that. So they process information differently than we do. And because we don't know that, so we talk to men at the time he can't process the information. And of course, he can't give you what you need. And we think he's either stupid or he doesn't care about us. No, we just have to know when to talk to him, when he can listen to you, when he can process your information. So that's what we teach you. Then you don't have to waste your time saying the same thing over and over again and being hurt. OK, number three, men, we think men are motivated like women. Unfortunately, we have a different motivation. You know how women often change by criticism? If you say, I don't look great in purple, you may not see me in purple again. Mm -hmm. Men are not like that. You criticize them, and they have four layers of defense against criticism. So in the Queen's Code Workshop, we teach you how to motivate men to actually give you what you need. And number four, women speaks hint. Who in here is fluent in hint? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just speak hint and hint and hoping that he'll pick it up, just <laughs> like your girlfriend would do, right? And they don't. And we get hurt by that because we pick up their hint. We're gathering all of the information. So in the Queen's Code Workshop, that's the biggest thing we teach you, how to communicate with men. How do you stop speaking hint and actually ask him for what you need? We actually give you a script on how to ask him for what you need so that he can actually respond to that. Okay, 
And then number five, we think words means the same thing. When we're speaking English and he's speaking English and we use the same word, we think it's the same thing. Often it's not. There are so many words that means different for men. The words that we avoid that actually resonate with men. As a woman, we'll be like, oh, no, no, I don't want to use that word. But if you actually use it, he can actually understand you. So these, uh, that's the Menglish that I'll be teaching you. And then number six, princess instead of partners. That's our attitude. So some of us, princess, princess versus partners. That's our attitude. Some of us has the princess attitude, right? Oh, I'm his girlfriend. Or, you know, he's lucky to go out with me. So maybe you're good at asking him what you need, right? But you just tell him what you need and you just expect him to do it instead of becoming a partner. Mm -hmm. So we teach you how to become a partner, but I wanna give you one piece from there. One other thing you wanna ask when you ask him for something you need, for you to become partner, you ask him, is there anything you need in order to give me what I'm asking for? Is there anything you need in order to give me what I'm asking for? So then you become a partner. You help him to give you what you need instead of just dropping it and expecting him to go out and get it for you. Is there anything you need in order for you to give me what I'm asking for? Okay, number seven, we withhold appreciation often. Why? Because it's too late, or I've done so much more than he did. And often, even if we're appreciating him, it's not registering it for him. So when men feel appreciated, they will do it again. So if there's something he did that you thought was great, but he never did it again, that means it didn't register for him as an appreciation. Mm -hmm. You didn't appreciate him in a way that resonated for him. So men learn by winning. And we need to be able to express that he's winning. So you see in the Queen's Code workshop that you see a man in a new light that gives you the kind of attitude that inspires men instead of resistance. And then you know when and how to talk to men for what you need so he can hear you. And then also you understand how men are motivated and you learn how to tell men the details of what you specifically need so you can actually get what you need. And you learn which words compels him and how to create partnership where you both get what you need. And you learn how to appreciate him in a way that resonates. So this is how you can create a beautiful partnership and also how you can have a successful relationship with every man in your life, in business or romantic or in life. So just imagine what your life would be like if you had all these skills. I had a woman who was 43 years old when she came to the Queen's Code workshop. And she's very successful in her business. She's very well known, but she's so busy helping everyone else. She never been in a long-term relationship. She never had a boyfriend when she came. And she's a very attractive woman. And after the Queen's Code workshop, and on Saturday, you get a homework. And I'm pretty adamant about it. It's not that hard, but you have to take the step. Right? So she did that homework. She started talking to this man that she knew for a long time. And because he lived halfway across the world, it took them a couple months to get together. But after that, rest was history. He started to send her all these bouquet of flowers, jewelries. Yeah, every time I saw her, she's like, oh my God, look at this, look at that. Sending her you know, ticket to Hawaii. And nine months later, he bought them a beach house in Australia. So she packed up her business and moved over there to be with him. And she said, I would have never done that if it weren't for the class. And she said, he wants to give me the world, right? But she was also being receptive when he wants to give her the world. 
And what's so cool is I saw her a um, couple months ago, and it's been four years since she took the workshop. And I didn't know what happened to her because she was uh, across the world. She said, oh my God, he still wants to give me the world. He mm -hmm. takes me to this like 20 people intimate retreat with Deepak Chopra. He's on my WhatsApp group, <laughs> right? And then like he would just take her to London just to watch tennis match at Wimbledon. Mm -hmm. Or um, I don't know if you, any of you know Richard Brunson, he's very well known, would have a dinner with him. I mean, I, I'm listening to her and I'm like, oh my God, this is just like Hollywood <laughs> story. So that's what's possible for you. And also, so that's in romantic area. There's a woman who, um, she's, she works in the engineering field and she came to the workshop because she was a little bit lost and she was having a hard time succeeding in um, men's world. Um, after the workshop, every time I saw her, it's been a year and a half, she was talking about her promotion. <laughs> I'm like, is that the same one as last time? And she said, no, no, this is a new one. So she's got three promotions in a year and a half. And now she's a partner. So what would be possible for you if you have this skill, if you have the communication skill, if you have the attitude to inspire men to be a partner with you? So I want you to just think about that. So close your eyes and think and there's no limit, right? So in your business or at your work, what will be possible for you if you knew how to communicate with men and they all want to give you what you need? And then your romantic partnership, he wants to give you the world. What would it look like? And in your family or with any strangers, they just want to give you everything they ever wanted. Okay, you can come back. So I hope you saw something mm -hmm. and I hope you learned something that's useful for you today. And I hope you get to go home feeling all charming mm -hmm. and sexy at the same time. Mm -hmm. So thank you for being an amazing participant here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope I get to see you at the Queen's Code Workshop. Thank you, everyone. And if you have any question, let me know. And uh, thank you so much for being part of the film. <laughs> okay, so go out and be confident and be sexy at the same time. <laughs>